Well, 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 that lasted long, didn't it? After only opening in 2021, Vanguard confirms closure of financial advice arm. This was actually brought to my attention by a viewer. I know, people actually watch this rubbish. Trust me, no one is more surprised than me. He emailed me the other day, alerting me to his outrage in relation to some communications he'd received from our friends over at Vanguard and asking my opinion on it all. Now, he's using their personal financial planning service, which is, or I should say was, Vanguard's advised option, whereby you get ongoing financial advice and planning and they'll manage your portfolio for you, i.e., Choose the funds you should be invested in and buy and sell accordingly as they see fit over time. But we now know they're canning it. A quick double check and, yep, look, gone. Why then? What's going on here? Well, here's what they said in their emails to notify him of the closure. After careful consideration, we have concluded that investors are looking for other, more adaptable forms of financial planning and guidance from Vanguard. We have therefore taken the difficult decision to close the service. Now, <laughs> I've read that five times. It's one of those statements that's full of interesting words, but it actually tells you nothing. Usual PR guff. So I don't know about you, but I'm none the wiser. A bit more digging, and I'm told that there was a mismatch between the anticipated and the eventual customer bases. Any clearer? No? Well, this might help. The average age of the client for this service was 38 years old. However, Money Marketing understands that Vanguard was expecting an older customer profile for its retirement advice service. They wanted older customers. That's who this was pitched at, which says to me they were chasing bigger pots. As we all know, the general wealth in society is concentrated in the older demographics for sure. Vanguard launched this personal financial planning service only recently, back in April 2021, so not that long ago, and boasted that it would take the load off your mind for just 0.79% a year in fees. It was going to deliver tailored advice, cash flow modelling, portfolio rebalancing the works. What's most interesting to me as a financial advisor is how they waxed lyrical about why advice is so important, citing that only one in 10 people take professional financial advice and that needs to change, but but they appear to have given up on it already. I'll tell you in a minute why I think that is. You needed £50,000 to access the service, 100 k if you wanted video access to an actual financial advisor, and if you were greedy enough to want your own advisor, like my clients have in me, I might add, you needed £750,000 on the Vanguard platform. Can anyone start to see why only 1 in 10 people get decent advice? Advice for less so you can retire with more, eh? Coming back to the chap who kindly notified me of this, the good news is they are refunding all fees paid for the service and they have apologised sincerely. They're also offering him a call with one of their financial planners to go through next steps. But broadly, here's his options. Number one, convert his account to a non-advised one. Simply move his assets onto the bog standard everyday Vanguard offering and choose what he does with his portfolio thereafter. Number two, transfer out. Find a new financial advisor and move elsewhere. Now, he's only got until the 31st of May when the service ends to make this decision. If he doesn't notify them, he will fall onto the non-advised option as a default, as I understand it. It's inconvenient, to say the least, and in his own words, obviously, if I wanted to manage my own portfolio of 11 funds, I wouldn't have joined their advice and management service in the first place. So there's a bit more info for you. He's got 11 funds in the portfolio that Vanguard put together for him. Now, we discussed his options. If he stays with Vanguard, he can, of course, stay in those 11 funds and make no changes or stay with Vanguard and sell down those funds and choose some different ones. Now, he wants a managed solution, so maybe something like, say, the life strategy funds could work, which I really like. Or he could, I suppose, look at some of the target retirement funds, which I like a lot less. But he's frustrated about having his hand forced, and what's more, he's actually sat on losses that he'd really rather not crystallise right now. 
And even more frustratingly, he won't get the portfolio rebalancing he wanted and signed up for. He didn't want to pick stuff himself. That was kind of the point. Let's quickly talk about portfolio rebalancing here. You see, what happens is the portfolio over time goes out of whack from the original allocations, and this is what rebalancing solves. Let's say you have a traditional 60-40 portfolio, as an example. 60% equities, 40% bonds. Over time, in normal conditions, <laughs> you'd expect the equity portion to grow faster than the bond portion, and so more and more of the portfolio becomes equities, and you end up with a smaller allocation to bonds. Left to its own devices, your portfolio could quite easily find itself 70% equity, 30% bonds, which is a higher risk portfolio than you tried to build, and not what you wanted. That's the basic theory, and this is what our guy here wanted and is no longer going to get. What's also pretty inconvenient is for anyone investing new cash, so say investing each month into their portfolio, they will now need new direct debit setting up, as where the money goes now has to change as a result of this closure. All in all, a royal pain in the arse. In the interest of balance, though, Vanguard have the right to close a service down if they want to. Of course they do. And to be fair, they are refunding all the fees paid, and it's not like people that were on the service don't have options. So I think they've done all they really can to smooth the blow, but it leaves us with the question of why. Here's what I think, but let me know in the comments what you think, please. I think they massively underestimated how involved and costly it is to provide quality financial advice and keep on the right side of the regulation we have here in the UK. They bit off more than they could chew, and I think it's easier for them to make money elsewhere, and that's what they'll do. They have said, we are committed to the development of further financial guidance and advice services to give investors the best chance of investment success. So maybe they haven't given up on it entirely, maybe it's just a rethink. I think they'll end up focusing on the guidance rather than advice side, giving you information but not making recommendations. It's much easier to go down this path, and they'll hope we'll still see them hoover up assets onto the Vanguard platform. We'll see.